Becky! When she was good. Stop running! She was very, very good. But when she was bad, hey! she was horrid. What was the point of all of this? How's it going out there, internet world? Simon Next Shark here with an all new movie review for you. So, in this movie review, we're going to be talking about a new horror classic that is getting big raves that was released back, I believe it was May or April, around that time it got released. I just finally watched it on DVD the other day, and this was a pretty kick ass film. So, we're going to be talking about that awesome new movie that the great Kevin James stars in, and it's going to be really awesome, so let's get right into it and see what it's all about. But first, if this is your first time here, or you've been here before, don't forget to hit that awesome subscribe button so you don't miss this video or any of the awesome videos I put up. And as always, people, hit that bell notification button too, so also you will get a notification when I put up awesome and new content. So let's go right into this and see what it's all about. <laughs> Welcome everyone from all social media lands and YouTubeville, welcome to an all new movie review. So like I was saying before, we're going to be doing a movie review of a film that just came out this year. It's a new, considered a horror classic, rave reviews, and is considered a huge hit. And then of course is a film called Becky. Oh yeah, Becky, Becky. So this horror film, like I said, came out just the beginning of this year. Uh, was originally supposed to, you know, take place at one of the film festivals that got canceled because of COVID, uh, but was put out onto DVD, Blu-ray, and all that kind of stuff for us to check out. And I just watched it like a, around a week ago, and this is just a really fantastically done film. I thought it was decent. I don't think it's the greatest film, but I think that it was definitely interesting and fun, and definitely would watch it again. So this film is none other directed by two gentlemen. So these two gentlemen have done pretty much every single film together. They, they're they uh, basically a directing duo. Kind of like, you know, the Russo brothers or the Wachowskis did for a really long time and so forth. So that happens to be the two gentlemen named Jonathan Malo and Kerry Manon. Oh, yeah. So these two gentlemen directed Becky. Now, they've actually directed a couple other films. Now, one of them I've seen, the other one I have not. And one of them I've seen I thought was really awesome, and I really like it, and I think it has a really great all-star cast. Now, the first film I like to talk about they've also directed it was a film called Cooties. Oh, yeah, Cooties, you know, like when you're a little kid and you're like, Oh, you got Cooties! Yeah, Cooties, which is a really awesome, like, zombie uh, disaster type of film, all taking place at an elementary school. And the wonderful thing about this film, too, is that it all only affects children. Versus when you always see other zombie movies, you always see it's dead adults and stuff like that, and you never actually ever, barely ever see kids being zombies. So this was actually a really cool concept, and that's why this is such a great film. It starred Elijah Wood, Alison Peel, Rain Wilson, Lee Winnall, uh, Jack McBrayer, huge cast, and it's just really awesome. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, Jonathan and Carrie did an amazing job directing this and gave a really cool zombie, new type of age type of comedy film. It was just really well done. Check it out, people. Now, the second film that they directed, which I haven't seen, but stars Brittany Snow and the awesome Dave Bautista, and that film called is Bushwick. Oh, yeah, Bushwick. So, basically, this film's kind of like a army slash kind of survival story. Kind of similar along the lines, I feel, of like Red Dawn uh, and stuff like that. But, basically, the tagline of the film is, this is the new Civil War, basically. And Dave Bautista and Brittany Snow are in this one town, and they basically got to take up arms and, like, save the city and stuff like that. So, it looks kind of interesting. I've seen the trailer. It looks... Uh, different. It looks fun. It looks like it's action packed. It looks like they, you know, Jonathan Carey did a really good job making the film, and it should be an interesting film. Definitely be checking it out soon to see what, if it's as great as their other stuff has been. But I thought when it comes to directing Carey, or Becky, I should say, I thought they did a really decent job. Like, they give us this new kind of different, you know, another film with a adolescent being kind of like the main hero in the film. And I thought that was a really clever idea. The movie, like I said itself, I thought that they did a good job. They had a 
decent writing of film. I don't think the writing was just there, but I felt that the casting wasn't the best, and I feel they could have done that better. But other than that, I thought they did a good job and gave us an interesting new classic type of horror film that's along the lines of, like, Bandy and the, and the Color of Space and that kind of stuff, you know, that Nick Cage has done. It's along that lines, and I think they do it did a decent job of directing this and giving something new and interesting. So this film has definitely a very different ensemble cast in this film. Now, a few of these people I've seen in other things, they are kind of bit actors and stuff like that, but, like, you're really your main three characters in it. They've been around, they've done a few things, but one of them I just feel was so miscast and just didn't bring the bad guy feel that I was looking for for this film. Now, to start off this awesome ensemble cast, is none other than the main hero herself, Miss Lulu Wilson! Oh yeah! So this girl, Lulu Wilson, is only 14 years old. She was born in 2005, will be turning 15 this year, and I think she's got some pretty good acting chops on her already for how young she is. And I even think that, you know, the previous few films that she's actually done and, you know, I've seen her in were actually uh, really good performances, too. I feel she's kind of like one of those old soul kind of people that's very young but has a very old school mind. And you can see that in her performance, and I think that brings a really good advantage to her acting ability. So, the first film I've seen her in that I thought she was really fun in was a film that starred Lou Diamond Phillips, and is a sequel uh, to a film that came out in the 90s. And that film is called Cop and a Half, New Recruit. Oh, yeah. This movie actually, surprisingly, was really good. I actually picked it up from the dollar store in their dollar bin, uh, when they have, like, their dollar movies that they put out, and they had it for a dollar. I thought, hey, why not? For a dollar, I'll check it out. And this movie actually was pretty darn good. It was super hilarious. Lulu was really fun in it, and Lou Diamond Film was really worked well with her, too, and it was really fun. A really well-rounded, like, kids family film. If you're interested in those types of films, definitely give it a whirl, people. It's worth the watch. Now, the second film that she was in that she has actually, it's a really small cameo in the film, but still I think that her presence in the film was a really good addition. And that, of course, is the awesome Steven Spielberg film, Ready Player One. Oh, yeah, such a fantastic film based on a book. Uh, it's such an amazing film. Really well done, really uh, awesome. The special effects in that movie were so fantastic done and really impressed with that film. I got to see that one in theaters, so I was very happy to be able to see that in theaters. But when it comes to Lulu Wilson's, like, just cameo in the film, it's a very small part. It has to do with, like, being a school child. But that little poor, you know, cameo portion that she had in the film was a really pretty interesting one because they were talking about some interesting facts that really bring out the source of the film and, you know, what it's it's going for. And she popping up and kind of giving a small little dialogue was really fun and just a really good addition to that film. If you haven't seen Ready Player One, definitely give it out to check out her cameo. She was really good in it. Now, it comes to performance in Becky, I thought she was a little over-exaggerated. I thought she did a decent job, and she was okay, but there was definitely some parts where I'm just like, wow, this is just, that's overacting, and I didn't care too much for it. But other than that, I thought she did a decent job in it, I thought she did a really good job of being kind of like this hero and taking care of the bad guys, and she kicked some butt. Really interesting. Uh, if you like Lulu Wilson, definitely check out a performance of this. See, she wasn't too shabby. So that brings me to the second actor in this film. And that, of course, is the person I think was the worst choice for this role. Mr. Kevin James! Oh, yeah! So Kevin James. Awesome actor. Love him as a comedian. Love him just as an actor. I think he's done, you know, great films, great shows over the years and stuff like that. But I feel that his characterization in this film just was not him. And it just wasn't his par either. He, him trying to portray, like, a evil person just didn't work for me. I felt like he was very flat throughout the whole entire film. And so I was really disappointed with that because I was really expecting something really cool and crazy from him because I think he's a really fantastic actor. But a couple of films that I really enjoy him that shows how great of an actor he is is none other than a great film that I feel is very underrated. And this film is called The Zookeeper. Oh yeah, The Zookeeper. I think this is a really fantastic, fun film. Lots of voiceover roles, lots of CGI, you know. Of course, CGI isn't the greatest, but still at the same time, the film itself is really fun and entertaining. And it had a great ensemble cast of voice actors and actors involved. You got Rosario Dawson in the film, you had Leslie Bibb, 
it's just a really well-rounded, fun comedy film that I think gets not enough credit for how fun it was. And just the whole idea was really fun, too. And Kevin James, I thought, was perfection on point in that film. So if you haven't seen The Zoo Cooper, definitely give it a try, people. Give it a whirl and give it a chance. It's a decent film. Now that brings me to the second film Kevin James was in that I thought he was really fantastic in that I don't think he gets enough hype for either. And that, of course, is the film called Here Comes the Boom. Oh, yeah. I mean, hands down, his acting and action scenes in that film were hands down really amazing and awesome. I mean, you had Henry Winkler in the film, and just, I thought he did an amazing job of transforming himself into that kind of lean muscle guy he was in the film. And I thought that really showed he has the potential to do serious types of roles. Because he did have a very serious edge to him in the film, along with the comedy. And I just think this is a very underrated film to begin with, because I think that it got a lot of slack because it wasn't your norm. So I feel this is kind of his magnus opus of showing his serious side, and I thought it was a really well done film. If you haven't seen Here Comes the Boom, definitely give it a try, people. It's worth the watch. Now, like I was saying, flat throughout the whole film, I was really disappointed in his performance. But other than that, I mean, still, I love seeing him. I thought that he still gave kind of an interesting characterization to the character, and still delivered his lines pretty well. But still, all around, not my favorite of his roles, and also I think he just wasn't a really good choice for that role. So that brings me to the final person I like to talk about in this acting ensemble cast. And that, of course, is none other than Lulu Wilson's father in the film, Mr. Joel McHale! Oh yeah! So Joel McHale, of course, you recognize from such films as, or TV shows as Community. You might recognize him from his own show called The Joel McHale Show. You might recognize him for from several things over the years. But a couple films I really enjoyed him and thought he was really good in were none other than a great film, as the awesome fourth film in this awesome series of kids' films that Robert Rodriguez gave us. And that, of course, is Spy Kids all the time in the world. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love his character in this film. I think he's absolutely hilarious and awesome and just kicks super butt in the film. And I thought he worked really well with everyone in the film. And just he brought a really great, like, comedy sense to the character that made him very, like, funny, but also at the same time very caring. And I thought that he just did a good job of portraying both those types of emotions in this character. And I thought that he was a great addition to that film series, which I think is one of, the, is one of my favorite you know, uh, family-friendly or family-type film series that are just so much fun. I think they're hilarious and awesome. And I thought that this film was really well done. And I thought Joel was really awesome in the film, too. If you haven't seen all Spy Kids all the time in the world, definitely check it out. The amazing and awesome and beautiful Jessica Alba's in it, too. Oh, yeah. So that brings me to the second film Joel McHale was in that I really enjoyed him in. And that is none other than an awesome Adam Sandler movie and Drew Barrymore film that came out in 2015. And that, of course, is a film called... Drew more, please, or 2014, actually. <laughs> Blended! Oh, yeah. So Blended, like I said, is a 2014 film. Really fun, really hilarious, and just a really well-rounded comedy film. That I think, once again, is another one that doesn't get enough credit for how fun and awesome it was. It was very similar to, you know, Fifty First Dates, along that same lines, but a little better, a little, I thought a little more better written and just a better storyline. But, at the same time, Joel McHale was super fun in this film. He plays the ex-husband of Drew Burmer in the film, and the, the father of her two sons. And he just was like, every time you see him and he comes on, the, and you're just like, this guy is freaking hilarious. And just like how he presented himself as kind of like this douche of a character, he was on point and so freaking funny. And just really enjoyed him, because he just brought a great uh, elegance and great just like persona to this character that was... Joel McHill to the T. Really fun performance. If you haven't seen Blended, definitely give it a whirl, people. It's worth the watch. So if you're not familiar with what the film Becky is about, basically the premise of the film is Joel McHill's character and his daughter, Lewison, are going out to this house they have and going to be stay there for the weekend. And a new family, basically, members come to stay with them, too, during the weekend, which is his new fiance and her son from her previous marriage. And they're supposed to get along and all this kind of stuff. And it's an old house that used to the family used to go to before the, the mother died of Lulu Wilson's character. And basically, while they're there, Kevin James comes in 
and is looking for a key, and basically this giant craziness ensues where they take the family hostage, and basically Lulu Wilson has to come to the rescue and save the day. It, it's a really fun, interesting film. Like I said, it's a different type of horror film. I thought it was really well uh, done. wasn't the best because the casting choice, but at the same time, still a really fantastically done film. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely give it a roll, people. It's fun, it's awesome, and it's just a really new classic type of horror film. So that's it for this movie review, guys. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for liking, and also thank you for subscribing. And if this is your first time here, if you've been here before, don't forget to check out the awesome horror pack down below, people, which gives you awesome horror films right to your door every month for a great low price. So if you either like DVDs or Blu-rays, you can get either of those options. And also, in July's box, you can get a 4K Ultra HD in it. Awesome! For the still the same price, which I think is really amazing. So if that's something to interest you, check out that link down below, people. And also that link down below will get you a discount on your first month if you're a new time subscriber. As always, people, catch you in the next one.